Learning Channel. If this presentation is enlightening, informative, and beneficial to you, remember to like, share, and subscribe. God bless you. I trust that you'll find this presentation beneficial. very different. As you can see, I'll be doing maths performance tasks in preparation for the PEP examination. I know that there are many parents like myself who are concerned about the upcoming examination and we want our child. We want our child or our children to do well. And so I trust that you'll find this video informative, engaging, and enlightening. God bless you. Remember also that a successful individual is one who is not only willing to learn daily, but is also one who contributes positively to molding lives. God bless you. is to encourage students to use the four principles, read, interpret, understand, and write, to master the pet performance task for mathematics. If you find this presentation to be enjoyable, beneficial, and enlightening, then remember to tell a friend. Remember also to like, share, and subscribe. God bless you. savings to rent a car for two days. How much money did she pay for the rental of the car? Note, in this question, right, we are looking only at the money that she paid for the rental of the car. How would we be able to find the money that she paid for the rental of the car? We were told Two important things. One, the family saved $30,000. Two, she only used one-fifth of that savings to rent a car for two days. Hence, we are required to find one-fifth of the $30,000. And by doing so, we will be able to find how much money she paid for the rental of the car. Do you follow? Do you understand this question? Let us work out how much money Mrs. Lindo would have paid for the rental of the car. Lindo's saved $30,000 and that they use one-fifth of that $30,000 to rent a car. We were also told to find out how much money did they spend for the rental of that vehicle. So, in order to find out the amount of money spent for the rental of the vehicle, first we have to realize that one fifth is the same as one over five. That means one divided by five. Then we will multiply. 1 multiplied by 30,000 is equal to 30,000 divided by 5. 5 into 5 goes 1 time. 5 into 3, you can't. 5 into 30 goes 6 time. Because 6 fives is 30. Then 5 into 0, 0. 5 into 0, 0. 5 into 0, 0. Hence, the answer is $6,000. So the Lindos spent 
$6,000 for the rental of the vehicle. Did you get that answer correct? If you did, pat yourself on the shoulders. Now that you have answered question one correctly, let us look at question two. The lenders use 50% of the remaining money to pay for their vacation home. How much money did they pay for their vacation home? Can you figure it out? If you can, give yourself another pat on the shoulder. Let's see if you were correct. to 24,000. Then you will need to find 50% of the remaining money. 50% is equal to 50 divided by 100 times $24,000. Why do we say 50 divided by 100? We say 50 divided by 100 because percentage means out of a hundred. So 50 divided by a hundred times 24,000 is equal to $12,000. So the answer is $12,000. If you got that answer correct, could you give yourself another pat on the shoulder? Good going guys. on clothes and vacation items, which are as follows. Two swimwear at $750 each, two swim trunks at $400 each, four sunglasses at $500 each, and two slippers at $1,000 each. How much money did they spend on clothes and vacation items? Can you figure out? this answer? Let's see. To solve this problem, you must first find out how much money the lenders spent on each item and then add all the money spent to arrive at your answer. Let's proceed. Two swimwear at $750 each, meaning that one swimwear costs $750. Hence, two swimwear would be $750 multiplied by two. So two swimwears would cost $1,500. Are you understanding so far? Two swim trunks at $400 each would mean that one swim trunk costs $400. Hence, in order for us to find the cost of two swim trunks, you'd multiply $400 by two. And the answer there is $800. Four sunglasses at $500 each. Remember each again, so that means one sunglass costs $500. But four would cost $500 times four, and that would mean $2,000. Two slippers at $1,000 each would mean that one slipper costs $1,000. One slipper costs $1,000. So two slippers now would cost $1,000 multiplied by two, which is $2,000. After you have calculated all the money spent on each item, right? You need to add all the items. So you would add $1,500 
plus eight hundred dollars plus two thousand dollars plus two thousand dollars again to arrive at the answer which is six thousand three hundred dollars if you got that then you need to give yourself another pat on the shoulders well done continue working question three correctly let us proceed to question four mr lindo spends three thousand five hundred dollars for gas at five hundred dollars for toll how much money did the lindo spend on fuel and toll and vacation items all together remember how much they spent on vacation items that's just giving you a clue. Let's see if you got the answer correct. To answer this question correctly, you must take into consideration the money that the lenders spent on vacation items and the money spent on gas and toll. Vacation items, $6,300. This was the response to the previous question. Gas, $3,500. Toll, $500. In order to find out how much money the Linda spent on vacation items and fluid and, and toll altogether, we must ha add the following items. 6300 Gas. For, for vacation items, gas, 3500 and toll, $500. When we add these figures together, we get a total of $10,300. Hence, the Linda spent $10,300. If you got that response, go ahead and pat yourself again on the shoulders. Well done. all the remainder of their money yes or no if you have chosen blue which is yes it means that you believe after you have calculated everything that there is no money left over for the lindos if you have selected no it means that they have not used all their money and there is money left over What's your opinion on this question? Let's see if you got it correct. This question correctly. You need to recall, that means to remember, the answer to question two and question four. The remainder of the Linda's money is $12,000. They had paid. 50% for their vacation home, which was $12,000, right? So they are left with $12,000 to, to do whatever spending they want to. If they have spent $12,000 or more, it would mean that they have used all the remainder of their money. But if they have spent less than $12,000, it would mean that they have not used all their money. And so the answer is no. So for those individuals who got that correct, go ahead and pat yourself on the shoulders. For those who were not correct, don't worry. You might get a mark here and there based on the justification of your answer. However, it is important that you remember your answer to question two and question four. That will give you a clue. Justify your answer. Justify your answer. And that means, simply means, give reason for your answer to the previous question. Right?
Can you justify your answer? To answer this question, students need to understand the term justify. What do we mean when we say justify your answer? To justify a response means that you are required to state clearly why you have chosen that response. Hence, if your response to the previous question is no, you must provide a reason for saying so. And if your response is yes, you must provide a reason for saying yes. The answer to the previous response is no. The Lindas did not spend all their money because they spent only $10,300 which is less than $12,000. This is how one justifies a response. I trust that you have found this information in beneficial. If you have found this presentation beneficial, please remember to tell a friend, share, like, and subscribe. God bless you. carefully. Read with analytical eyes. Read all questions carefully. Tip number two, pay close attention to the key terms in the question. Note all key terms. Tip number three, ask yourself, what is the question asking me to do? What am I required to do? Am I required to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Tip number four, try and work out how to get the answer rather than just writing an answer. I trust that you have found this information beneficial. Stay tuned. This is part one of a two-part series.